Finally, getting the official confirmation <laughs> on what we might Indeed. have suspected. Yeah, and remember there had been a little bit of guidance on the pricing. Initially, people thought this uh, purchase would be valued at $3.2 billion for Beats. Uh, and then there was reporting it might be $3 billion. In this news release from Apple, they cite the price at $3 billion, uh, a price that uh, includes approximately $2.6 billion uh, and, a, and another $400 million that will vest over time. Um, I think one of the things that is uh, everyone's been curious about is the role of Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine, the founders of this company, and, and how they would play into this. And Apple is very clear in this press release to highlight the fact that they will be joining Apple, which raises a lot of questions about why this deal was announced in the first place. Were they buying it for the technology? Were they buying it for the hardware? Were they buying it for were the Were they buying it for Dr. Dre this? and for Jimmy? For I mean, Dr. It, Dre. I mean, that, that's, that's been one of the, the questions that's been talked about. Was this really a talent acquisition, John? Yes, I think it is. I mean, I think we've had a lot of time to digest this deal because there's been a lot of reporting on it. And certainly for a company like Apple, which is looking to stay very relevant in the minds of consumers, hiring basically bringing aboard some very well-known players who have in a lot of ways uh, re uh, or transformed sort of this whole electronics market, listening to music market over the last couple of years that could breathe some new life into Apple. Now, I think there's still a lot of things behind behind the stage that we don't necessarily know about in terms of what Beats has been working on, what Apple's working on long term, which could benefit the, uh, the company. There's also been a lot of discussion about, you know, in a world where people are listening to subscription music services, maybe in a bigger way these days than wanting to actually buy music, like through iTunes, is there a benefit to sort of making this bigger play into streaming? So certainly that's a, one of the factors behind doing a deal like yeah. this, having the talent like Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine and other. Hey, John, stick with us. I've got uh, Julie here, Alex here, Eric Chemi here. And, you know, we've all uh, talked at, at length about this. One of the, the, the issues that has come up, however, is whether or not this was the smartest acquisition you could possibly make as Apple if you wanted to get into the streaming business because Spotify's out there, Pandora's out there. I don't know how the valuations look, but if you're willing to pay $3 billion for something, well, well, uh, you might as well look around. Well, Spotify's valued $4 billion, and Mashable had a great article that said dump beats by Spotify for just a billion dollars more, you get, what, 10 million paying subscribers 10 million. versus 111,000? 10 million paying subscribers, 30 million free users uh -huh. compared to 111,000. So the average price is like $29,000 well, per user. I mean, may, uh, you wonder, I mean, because we don't know the entire backstory here, who else they may have approached uh, in the streaming business? Because it, it, to your point, I mean, Spotify would theoretically make sense. You get a lot more for your money. But Beats themselves, sources close to them, say that we know that our strength is the marketing. It's not really the users. It's not really the hardware or the software. It's all about the names, right? It's like Dr. Dre, for example. It's just that brand name. So they know that that's their strength. So they can sell to the highest bidder. They just need one company to buy. So if it works for Apple and they've got money to burn because they have a lot of cash, then it doesn't really matter if it's $3 billion. Um, John Ehrlichman joining us with uh, some additional news on the story. John. Well, just to what you were just saying, culture and uh, cultures coming together is always an important factor. I think it's really interesting as you look through this press release, Jimmy Iovine saying, quote, I've always known in my heart that Beats belonged with Apple. And then he goes on to say when they started the company, it was inspired by Apple. And so I think, you know, when you talk about what Apple could be doing, um, Having a partner who's willing to come out and say that that was always part of their inspiration for the company to begin with would suggest that bringing these two companies might make more sense than something else that Apple could do yeah. if the two businesses are seeing eye to eye. Corey Johnson, I can see why uh, you know they would say that they had been inspired by Apple. Corey, uh, of course, joining us from San Francisco, um, just given the actual design of the product, what do you think it means for the hardware side of the business? Are they going to abandon that? Or do you think well, that they'll just rebrand it as Apple? Uh, Jimmy's being very clever with that quote because when they, when they launched the business, what they told us in Bloomberg West is, yes, they were inspired by how crappy the Apple iPhones were. Those were the phrases he would use. And, and the sound quality. And they really felt they could bring something better to the table. Now, they've clearly, by going to Bluetooth, by backing away from the hardwired uh, cable the headphones, uh, some have argued that the quality has gotten worse in those Beats headphones. But fundamentally, Apple was going to be spending a lot of money to develop better and better headphones. They've kind of acquired some of that with this acquisition. And this is 
a, uh, uh, well, it's a ton of money. Uh, the way that Apple's generating cash and has been unable to put that cash to use, this is outsourced R&D in the most classic sense of Silicon Valley acquisitions.